This is an ABC News special report. Good afternoon, I'm David Muir here at ABC News headquarters in New York. We are interrupting your regular program to bring you some powerful images unfolding at this hour. These images just moments ago from Andrews Air Force Base, now known as Joint Base Andrews as well, where as you can see the caskets carrying the bodies of those four Americans killed in Libya, about to be brought off the plane there and into a hangar on the base. Of course, among those killed, U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens, as well as Sean Smith, Glenn Doherty, Tyrone Woods, their bodies have all been brought back home. You can see the caskets coming off the planes. Chris Stevens was a career diplomat, had served two tours in Libya, helping the rebels actually save the city of Benghazi from Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. Sean Smith was an Air Force veteran who worked as an information management specialist. Glenn Doherty, a former Navy SEAL working for a private security, he was 42. His sister actually saying he was the best of the best, went on to say he wouldn't have gone down for some protest over a movie. This was a serious, well-planned, well-executed attack. He was very good at what he did, in her words. And of course, Tyrone Woods, a former Navy SEAL who served multiple tours in Iraq, Afghanistan, three sons and a family member saying he loved life, loved adrenaline. You could not find a more skilled SEAL than him. We're going to go to live pictures now, as you can see, Secretary Clinton there, President Obama. The families have gathered there in the hangar as well, we are told. Earlier in the week, the President reaching out to the family of Ambassador Stevens, calling them from Air Force One. And as you know, both have spoken in recent days about the work of these four Americans overseas in Libya. Hillary Clinton, in the last 24 hours, the Secretary of State, talking about her own faith saying refraining from violence is not a sign of weakness in one's faith. It is absolutely the opposite, a sign that one's faith is unshakable. She went on to say we can pledge that whenever one person speaks out in ignorance and bigotry, ten voices will answer. We are expecting this afternoon to hear from Secretary of State Clinton as well as the President on the attack, on the loss of four Americans in Libya earlier this week on the anniversary of 9-11. We want to join now our senior foreign affairs correspondent, Martha Reddits. We see Secretary Clinton taking the microphone. Martha, we'll hear from you in just a moment. Much, Here's the Secretary of State. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Secretary Panetta, Ambassador Rice, Secretary Powell and Mrs. Powell, family members of the four patriots and heroes we bring home, members of the State Department family, Ladies and gentlemen, today we bring home four Americans who gave their lives for our country and our values. To the families of our fallen colleagues, I offer our most heartfelt condolences and deepest gratitude. Sean Smith joined the State Department after six years in the Air Force. He was respected as an expert on technology by colleagues in Pretoria, Baghdad, Montreal, and The Hague. He enrolled in correspondence courses at Penn State and had high hopes for the future. Sean leaves behind a loving wife, Heather, two young children, Samantha and Nathan, and scores of grieving family, friends, and colleagues. And that's just in this world, because online, in the virtual worlds that Sean helped create, he is also being mourned by countless competitors, collaborators, and gamers who shared his passion. Tyrone Woods, known to most as Roan, spent two decades as a Navy SEAL, serving multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Since 2010, he protected American diplomatic personnel in dangerous posts from Central America to the Middle East. He had the hands of a healer 
as well as the arms of a warrior. Earning distinction as a registered nurse and certified paramedic. Our hearts go out to Tyrone's wife, Dorothy, and his three sons, Tyrone Jr., Hunter, and Kai, born just a few months ago, along with his grieving family, friends, and colleagues. Glenn Doherty, who went by Bub, was also a former SEAL and an experienced paramedic. He too died as he lived, serving his country and protecting his colleagues. Glenn deployed to some of the most dangerous places on earth, including Iraq and Afghanistan, always putting his life on the line to safeguard other Americans. Our thoughts and prayers are with Glenn's father, Bernard, his mother, Barbara, his brother, Gregory, his sister, Kathleen, and their grieving families, friends, and colleagues. I was honored to know Ambassador Chris Stevens. I want to thank his parents and siblings who are here today for sharing Chris with us and with our country. What a wonderful gift you gave us. Over his distinguished career in the Foreign Service, Chris won friends for the United States in far-flung places. He made those people's hopes his own. During the revolution in Libya, he risked his life to help protect the Libyan people from a tyrant. And he gave his life, helping them build a better country. People loved to work with Chris. And as he rose through the ranks, they loved to work for Chris. He was known not only for his courage, but for his smile, goofy but contagious, for his sense of fun and that California cool. In the days since the attack, so many Libyans, including the ambassador from Libya to the United States, who is with us today, have expressed their sorrow and solidarity. One young woman, her head covered and her eyes haunted with sadness, held up a handwritten sign that said, thugs and killers don't represent Benghazi nor Islam. The president of the Palestinian Authority, who worked closely with Chris when he served in Jerusalem, sent me a letter remembering his energy and integrity and deploring, and I quote, an act of ugly terror. Many others from across the Middle East and North Africa have offered similar sentiments. This has been a difficult week for the State Department and for our country. We've seen the heavy assault on our post in Benghazi that took the lives of those brave men. We've seen rage and violence directed at American embassies over an awful internet video that we had nothing to do with. It is hard for the American people to make sense of that because it is senseless. And it is totally unacceptable. The people of Egypt, Libya, Yemen, and Tunisia did not trade the tyranny of a dictator for the tyranny of a mob. Reasonable people and responsible leaders in these countries need to do everything they can to restore security and hold accountable those behind these violent acts. And we will, under the President's leadership, keep taking steps to protect our personnel around the world. There will be more difficult days ahead, but it is important that we don't lose sight of the fundamental fact that America must keep leading the world. 
We owe it to those four men to continue the long, hard work of diplomacy. I am enormously proud of the men and women of the State Department. I'm proud of all those across our government, civilian and military alike, who represent America abroad. They help make the United States the greatest force for peace, progress, and human dignity the world has ever known. If the last few days teach us anything, let it be, be this, that this work and the men and women who risk their lives to do it are at the heart of what makes America great and good. So we will wipe away our tears, stiffen our spines, and face the future undaunted. And we will do it together, protecting and helping one another, just like Sean, Tyrone, Glenn, and Chris always did. May God bless them and grant their families peace and solace. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. And now, let me have the great honor of introducing someone who came to the State Department earlier this week to grieve with us. He well understands and values the work that these men were doing for our country, the President of the United States. Scripture teaches us greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Glenn Doherty never shied from adventure. He believed that in his life he could make a difference, a calling he fulfilled as a Navy SEAL. He served with distinction in Iraq and worked in Afghanistan, and there in Benghazi, as he tended to others, he laid down his life, loyal as always, protecting his friends. Today, Glenn is home. Tyrone Woods devoted 20 years of his life to the SEALs, the consummate, quiet professional. At the Salty Frog Bar, they might not have known, but Roan also served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And there in Benghazi, he was far from Dorothy and Tyrone Jr., Hunter and Little Kai. And he laid down his life, as he would have for them, protecting his friends. And today, Roan is home. Sean Smith, it seems, lived to serve first in the Air Force, then with you at the State Department. He knew the perils of this calling from his time in Baghdad. And there in Benghazi, far from home, he surely thought of Heather and Samantha and Nathan. And he laid down his life in service to us all. Today, Sean is home. Chris Stevens was everything America could want in an ambassador, as the whole country has come to see. How he first went to the region as a young man in the Peace Corps, how during the revolution he arrived in Libya on that cargo ship, how he believed in Libya and its people, and how they loved him back. And there in Benghazi, he laid down his life for his friends. Libyan and American, and for us all. Today, Chris is home. Four Americans, 
for patriots. They loved this country, and they chose to serve it, and served it well. They had a mission, and they believed in it. They knew the danger, and they accepted it. They didn't simply embrace the American ideal. They lived it. They embodied it. The courage, the hope, and yes, the idealism. That fundamental American belief that we can leave this world a little better than before. That's who they were, and that's who we are. If we want to truly honor their memory, it's who we must always be. I know that this awful loss, the terrible images of recent days, the pictures we're seeing again today, have caused some to question this work. And there is no doubt these are difficult days. In moments such as this, so much anger, and violence, even the most hopeful among us must wonder. But amid all the images of this week, I also think of the Libyans who took to the streets with homemade signs expressing their gratitude to an American who believed in what we could achieve together. I think of the man in Benghazi with his sign in English, a message he wanted all of us to hear. It said, Chris Stevens was a friend to all Libyans. Chris Stevens was a friend. That's the message these four patriots sent. That's the message that each of you sends every day, civilians, military, to people in every corner of the world, that America is a friend, and that we care not just about our own country, not just about our own interests, but about theirs that even as voices of suspicion and mistrust seek to divide countries and cultures from one another, the United States of America will never retreat from the world. We will never stop working for the dignity and freedom that every person deserves, whatever their creed, whatever their faith. That's the essence of American leadership. That's the spirit that sets us apart from other nations. This was their work in Benghazi, and this is the work we will carry on. To you, their families and colleagues, to all Americans, know this. Their sacrifice will never be forgotten. We will bring to justice those who took them from us. We will stand fast against the violence on our diplomatic missions. We will continue to do everything in our power to protect Americans serving overseas, whether that means increasing security at our diplomatic posts, working with host countries which have an obligation to provide security, and making it clear that justice will come to those who harm Americans. Most of all, even in our grief, we will be resolute. For we are Americans, and we hold our head high, knowing that because of these patriots, because of you, this country that we love will always shine as a light unto the world. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. The flagged they served under now carries them home. May God bless the memory of these men who lay down their lives for us all. May God watch over your families and all who love them. And may God bless these United States of America. With their families looking on, President Obama speaking of the four Americans who lost their lives, saying today, Glenn, Tyrone, Sean, and Chris Before our are home. Addiction. We will stand together for the playing of the national anthem as we render honor to the nation that these men loved and for which they died.
right shoulder. Who offered me? Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of us all and lover of the human race, we commend to you our brothers Chris and Sean and Glenn and Tyrone. Into your merciful hands receive them. Deliver them from all fear. Strengthen them in your presence and give them your peace. Amen. The President, the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, now approaching the families of the four Americans who were lost. The President saying moments ago to you, the families and colleagues, their sacrifices will never be forgotten. We will bring to justice the perpetrators. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, watching on with me. She's from her post in Washington this afternoon. And Martha, I was struck by the Secretary of State, almost with a message for the world, saying the people in that part of the world did not trade tyranny of a dictator for the tyranny of a mob. Those were powerful words, David. The one word I would say would sum up both of those remarks by President Obama and Secretary Clinton, resolve. But I'm also struck by these sad, somber, and powerful ceremonies. We have seen so many Americans come home in the last decade, thousands, soldiers, Marines, but this is so unusual for the State Department. It's the first time in over 30 years an ambassador has been killed by violence. The State Department is not used to this. These are diplomats. Chris Stevens wasn't armed. They certainly have security, but for the most part, they are going out to see people. I was reading a statement, the mission statement of the State Department just now. It says, shape and sustain a peaceful, prosperous, just, and democratic world and foster conditions for stability and progress for the benefit of the American people and people everywhere. That's how these people lived. That's how they died. There is nothing more powerful than seeing these caskets with the flag on top of them. I've been on these flights before. It is the most profound thing possible, David. Profound, especially, Martha, when you hear of the children left behind. We heard the President and the Secretary of State speak of Tyrone Wood's children, his wife, Dorothy, Tyrone Jr., Hunter, and Kai, who was newly born. Sean Smith, his children, Samantha, and Nathan also remembered at the service today. The Secretary of State talking about the California cool of Ambassador Chris Stevens, the career diplomat, talking about his laugh, his smile, personality, calling it goofy, but contagious. And this week we've seen the images from the State Department. Martha, colleagues in mourning this week. They are indeed, and I know President Obama's visit to the State Department meant a great deal on that morning when they learned of Ambassador Stevens' death and those of the others uh, walking around the State Department. I know people are really truly in shock, but I would say the same thing. There is resolve there. They want to move forward. They want to do the job that they have set out to do. And as you heard the Secretary and the President say, they will continue to do that job despite the violence we have seen across North Africa, across the Middle East since then. And some very powerful words about that anti-Muslim movie, uh, Secretary Clinton, very strong words about that. Saying we had nothing to do with it. And in fact, Jake Tapper, our chief White House correspondent, also with me this afternoon. And Jake, new calls for restraint from that new Islamist president of Egypt, calling for calm in his country. That's right, President Obama has been reaching out uh, privately to the presidents of, of Egypt, Libya, and Yemen, asking them uh, to urge calm in the streets and also to urge them to provide uh, protection uh, for the U.S. diplomats who are there. Of course, President Obama also sending some Marines to Yemen and Libya to help with that protection as well, David. Some powerful and poignant moments in this hangar as you're looking live at Andrews Air Force Base this afternoon. Our thanks to Jake Tapper, to Martha Raddatz, who will be joining me later for a full report on world news. We see the hearse pulling out with the first of those caskets, the four Americans remembered by both the President and the Secretary of State this afternoon. We want to return you now to your regular program. We'll be following this all afternoon at abcnews.com. And as I mentioned a moment ago, I hope to see you tonight for much more on world news on this somber afternoon. Good day.